part of this presentation at Andy, you had just 13 kind of tips rapid fire that you always feel like are important for everybody um, to know. So I want you to run through these and then I'd be interested um, for us to kind of real quickly ask ourselves if we think um, these 13 are still relevant or not relevant in 2023 compared to maybe four or five years ago um, when we were starting our current brand more. So run us through those and and then let us know kind of any changes that you would see uh, in 2023. Yeah. All right. So let's just rip through these again. This is private label, you know, primarily again, if you're sourcing from overseas, one of the first things you always have to do with your products is you have to get it inspected. You have to make sure that that manufacturer is making your product to the specs that you received your sample of. So, you know, we often talk about you get a sample and you're going to measure it. If it's a clothing item, you're going to wash it. And then you are going to make sure in writing, get your manufacturer to agree that they are going to produce it exactly to those specs that you say. So another uh, tip that we often give as well is if you've not sourced at all overseas, it is definitely helpful to either use a trading company or use a sourcing agent. So there are out there, if you're on Facebook, you can find some. If you're listening to our podcast and you need a recommendation, I have a few. I don't get any money or any affiliate from them, but they are phenomenal. And it is going to really speed up your process as well as potentially save you a lot of money. Third thing is you have to get a customs bond. If this is a real business, you're not interested in building a hobby, you want to get a yearly bond, costs about $350. That's what you're going to be able to import your goods with a lot less headache by doing that, working with your customs agent. You have to get a freight forwarder. Again, a lot of people get tied up or they get caught up thinking, oh man, how am I, I don't understand shipping. What do I got to do? And that's not how it works. You get a freight forwarder, they connect with your manufacturer and then they handle everything till it shows up at your doorstep, your warehouse or Amazon. Let me, let me ask you this, Go getting, ahead. getting a local one versus Chinese suppliers seem to always have their own. What's your recommendation? Yeah, so we always recommend you want to get a USA one. Um, a lot of times the, the suppliers will say, hey, you know, they have one, but we've just had too many difficulties. We have used at times uh, Chinese freight forwarders that the manufacturers recommended. And it just seems like when it gets to custom, there have been a number of hiccups. So we prefer you just, you know, there's a ton of them here in the U.S. Go with them. The, the, the difference financially is not going to be that good. The fifth thing is you want to get a good manual and inserts to go with your product. If you don't know what those are, I encourage you to go back, listen to some of our podcasts about why we use inserts and then why we create good manuals. Well, I'll talk about good manuals. All of us have received furniture probably. We've purchased furniture from the store. You open it up. And unfortunately, what it's what I call Chinglish. It's very hard to understand. And you can see that it was written probably by a Chinese manufacturer. So do the hard work and just make your manual really good. Your customers are going to appreciate it, which is going to lead to really good reviews. You want to benchmark your listing against good listings on Amazon. So again, a lot of people get caught up. They're like, I don't know how to create a listing. It's really not rocket science. You can go on Amazon, look at the listings of products that are similar to yours, and you can get an idea of what you need to do to create a good listing. So just benchmark your listings against Amazon's. When researching a niche, one of the things that we often look for to see how competitive it is, is we look to see, are there video ads running? So video is relatively new to Amazon. Probably in the last three or four years, they started sell it, allowing sellers to run video ads. It's still in a lot of different niches. Video ads are not seen. If you are looking again at those keywords and you discover a product around it and you see when you search for those terms that there's not a video ad running, that's really good for you because it probably means that that niche may be a little less competitive as well as now you have an advantage if you create a video ad for those keywords in that niche. 
We recommend, again, if you're making this a business, it's not just a hobby. You want to get brand registry. You get a lot of different um, ability to work in Seller Central that you're not going to get if you don't get brand registry. Amazon has what they call an a accelerator program. You work with an attorney that they approve, and usually you can get it done within five to eight days, and then you have access to brand registry. I, so I have, I have one ahead. thing on that I would say. Yep. Um, they used the accelerator program when they came out with it was like super helpful because it was the only way to do it fast. But Amazon made it now so you can really work with any attorney to or even do it yourself if you know how to file your own trademark. And then uh, when you go to do brand registry, Amazon just emails that attorney a code essentially proving that they're like the attorney of record for the trademark. And then you can go in and do that yourself now. So it used to be you had to use the accelerator program or wait a super long time, but now you can really use any attorney um, and get brand registered in like a week still. So I think that's something that I've talked to a lot of people and they haven't realized that. So the accelerator program is not bad, but I do think it's a little bit more expensive just because they have like a, a monopoly or, or on on sellers going through the program at this point. So I feel like you're going to pay over a thousand dollars probably for a trademark through the accelerator for most of them that in my experience. And if you have a local attorney or someone else, you can sometimes get your trademark depending on how many classes you file for, for, you know, 600, 700. So save a couple hundred bucks potentially. So little tip there. Cool. All right. So the number nine is just be prepared. Uh, Nate uh, talked about a little earlier. You're, you're going to have marketing costs. So you're going to have to spend pretty heavy in PPC during the first month of the listing. Uh, Amazon is definitely a pay to play plat platform now. It didn't used to be. Uh, you are going to get your product seen by utilizing Amazon's advertising. So just know that. Make sure you set money aside for it. You need to become really good at PPC. If, if you're not good at it, you need to outsource it to an agency or you need to seek out someone who is good because that's really going to be the engine that launches your product and then keeps your product going. You have to be able to do really good PPC on Amazon. 11th thing is, look, you want to read this book. I'm going to say it uh, slowly. It's titled Poorly Made in China by Paul Midler. It's going to help you get an inside look into what it is working with Chinese manufacturers. It, it is definitely different. There are huge cultural differences and, and it will kind of be eye opening on uh, steps that you need to take. And again, how they look at business, how we look at business is very differently. That book again is titled Poorly Made in China by Paul Mittler. The fifth or uh, 12th thing is we uh, originally a uh, long time ago, we would order a full container of a brand new product. Uh, that's just how we did it. Now we like to start and launch new products with the least amount of possible. So our target number is around 50 units because that's going to give you an idea again of how competitive the market is. It's going to help you kind of understand what the search terms are. It's going to help you understand what the cost is going to be for PPC. And it's just going to de-risk yourself a little bit um, other than doing it the old way when we used to order a full container. So at, if you can at all, negotiate with your manufacturer. Try to always start with the lower MOQ when you're launching new products. And then the last thing is, if you've listened to us at all, you know, one of our favorite podcasts uh, that we listened to early on was Sarah Blakely's interview. It's on the How I Built This podcast. If you have not listened to that, it is extremely inspiring. Uh, the way that she has been able to build her company Spanx, which now is a multi-billion dollar company. She built it. She was selling fax machines door to door. She then actually um, wrote uh, the uh, patent herself uh, on the designs that she was creating, got her mom, who was an artist, to draw them. So it was really bootstrapping, but extremely inspiring and what Nate and I often think is if you want to build something special on Amazon, if you want to build a brand and we both bootstrapped from, you know, from the ground up, that's really what you need to do. You need to have that kind of mindset. And uh, so listen to that podcast again, Sarah Blakely. It's, uh, it's on the podcast, how I built this. And I believe it was one of the first ones on NPR. I like ending with that because 
you know, there's probably some nuanced changes I would make to each of those first 12 uh, tips there over the years. But at the end of the day, most of it's basically the same. And if you listen to that podcast, that interview with Sarah Blakely, it really all comes down to that. Like you said, do you have the grind and the grit to get it done? And I mean, go listen to our podcast, go on YouTube, do whatever you need to do to learn the process. But at the end of the day, you just have to work hard and, and really grind it out to, to do all the, the little details along the way. <laughs> 